for Fantasy Football Show. My name is Danny Heifetz and I am joined by Danny Kelly and Craig Rollback. And today we are going over all the games from Sunday of week 10. And we have to start with the Lions comeback win over the Houston Texans, which involved, I believe, two field goals that collectively passed the uprights by, I, I mean this, I don't even think a full inch between the two <laughs> yeah, yeah. field goals combined. DK, have you ever in your entire league, in, in your entire life, seen one field goal be that close to the uprights <laughs> without touching them? Never mind two in one game. That's I don't what think, I, I, I don't can't think believe so. this is what you're leading with. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the field goal. <laughs> the game field field goals. Not the eight interceptions from the game. Oh, uh, that too. That was it was just a weird game. Seven. Yeah, no, there were a Seven. lot of interceptions. Yeah. Craig, how are you doing mentally? Because I feel like I am like genuinely like we like wellness check. Are you a lot? How are yeah. you doing? This is the lowest moment I've felt in fantasy football in some time. For those who don't know, I am in my high school long-running league. I'm having a terrible season, a lot of injuries. I have Goff and Stroud, both, because it's a super, super flex, flex league. Yeah. I just needed like a normal outing from the two of them. 200 yards, two touchdowns each, nothing crazy. And they come out and throw fucking seven interceptions. <laughs> one player was like, try, must have been on the on the guy's team that I was playing in fantasy, because one of the Texans O-linemen actually tried to strip the ball from <laughs> C.J. Stroud to Titus add another— Howard. Yeah, yeah, to get to eight turnovers from the quarterbacks. But, you know, it's not all bad because the record for the most picks thrown by an individual player in a game is eight. So Goff didn't do that. And that was some guy named Jim Hardy in 1950. He died only four years ago. So <laughs> his picture on Wikipedia is a, is a drawing. Um, <laughs> and Goff was, you know, close to those numbers. But, um, yeah, it was an outright disaster. I, I was really annoyed with Chris Collinsworth the whole night gassing up C.J. Stroud every time he completed a pass as if he's the, still some phenom. Stroud hasn't been good in a month and was making stupid decision after stupid decision tonight, forcing throws, throwing up hospital balls. There's a guy on his back and he's trying to force it into a tight window. Stroud was just as bad as Goff. The play where he had Tank Dell wide open in the end zone and he just like lofted it up or whatever. I would argue was... Stroud was worse than Goff tonight. <laughs> I will say, no. yeah, because Goff did the five interceptions. No. One two, was two of them a hail, were like not his fault. One was a hail mary at the end of the first. Three half. of them were not his fault. Yeah, one was a hail mary. One was basically like a strip sack. Yes, and then one was. Tipped. I guess there were still three. I have to account for one was tipped. One was tipped. I, <laughs> one was tipped. So he only threw. So once you get so rid he of only three, threw he two. Only two. If you subtract <laughs> the other three, also you. Also wait, we have to do some respect here, Craig, because Jeff Darlington tweeted out. You're talking about whoever you know. Like Jeff Darlington, he just tweeted out. Uh, exactly 80 years ago, almost Lions quarterback Frankie Sinkwich threw eight Sinkwich. interceptions in a 14 to 10 win. So that that remained the most they interceptions won? thrown you by know, a quarterback in the game. Frankie that? Sinkwich. I tried to find that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't corroborate that stat. So I, 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 Frankie I don't know Sinkwich. If that's real. He's I, wearing a leather Frankie's, helmet. It's in the look, cannon, Craig. Is it okay? I think Jim Hardy's got the belt. <laughs> Sinkwich versus Hardy is is the next big matchup of who threw eight. You picks. can just so, throw out a name, and no one will know. Like, just let's make it up, dude. I, I just like fantasy, <sighs> Craig. We're gonna lose Craig. We're I losing just, Craig. Like, it's so debilitating. And you want to know the kicker to all this is now I'm going into Monday night down fifteen, and I have Jalen Waddle. Oh my! <laughs> god. All he has to do is hit his. Wait, also, Dude, wait, Tyreek now might is, not play. You might wait, be in the. You might be like bite your tongue, lucky Daniel. Here. Yeah, yeah. Now is now is the time we have to unveil. We, we finally figured this out for years because, well, I guess just a little tease for people. But everyone has always said doing their start sit lineup based on how many projected points you have, and Waddle's always projected fourteen point eight points or whatever, and he never hits it. Hits it. So we're gonna have to. We're gonna do the Waddle model. This is like the ultimate test yes. for the Waddle model of whether Jan mm -hmm. Waddle can actually hit his points. So should I should I do um I feel like this was the perfect week for uh, for Stroud to play on Sunday night and lay an egg because we just saw Gus Johnson we saw sad Gus Johnson for the yeah, first what time was that? Oh, oh yeah dude that was so sad I don't know <laughs> what, what was happened that? it makes perfect so if he were announcing the game tonight I, well, he would have been like Stroud <laughs> drops back sees Tank Dell picked off <laughs> What was the deal with that? Was he like? Well, I think it? it was like thirty-five to seven or whatever. Well, yeah. Maybe he was bored. But yeah, but no, that's, if that's not, his if, whole thing. Is he's like never bored. That's true. <laughs> if, if you have no idea what we're talking about, Ohio, like he's there was never a, bored. Ohio and State he, had a strip no one sack. watching the game gets bored. Either. Yeah, he had a strip sack of the Purdue quarterback, and literally he did. You just do. You it was do a the scoop thing. and score, and he was like, "Yeah, uh, Ohio State strips the quarterback, recovers the fumble, 
Touchdown. Makes it into the end zone. Yeah, it was like he was ordering Make a car. Make into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. And I was like, what? Give me something good. Anyway. Do more Stroud, Gus Johnson, just for the people. Sad Gus? No, it's happy uh, Gus. I, well, no, I can't do it. I'm not gonna Fine. I'm not gonna give Stroud that satisfaction. I uh, hate CJ Stroud and I hate Jared Goff. So that <laughs> so this one is from Chase Daskalos. I couldn't believe this. There are two instances in the next gen stats era of a quarterback throwing intercept, an interception to every level of the field, which is behind oh, yeah, the yeah. line of scrimmage, in front of the line of scrimmage, intermediate and deep in one game. And it's Jared Goff tonight and Nathan Peterman in twenty seventeen. Do you remember that Nathan Peterman game? I remember legendary. where I was. Yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. So yeah. what an incredible game. Man. Uh, we also, while we're on this Lions Texans game, we have to talk about uh James Houston, the linebacker for the Lions, who I mean early get fart or sharp. Did he poop his pants? Sure looked like it. This is the it danger did. of I, I've always thought it, it's a little dangerous to have white uniforms in the NFL yeah. or any sport, really. Yeah. Um I'm surprised it, we don't see more sharts on the yeah. floor, really. I didn't agree. see it. Basically, there's a large brown area in his butthole region uh, right where the right where the poop would come out. i mean it putting one in <laughs> putting one and one together you know or two and it's two, it's whatever. one of those like there's nothing else it could number possibly two and number have two. been there it is yeah <laughs> I was hoping you there. <laughs> it took me too long right. <laughs> you were on the right path <laughs> one and one together. I slowly uh, took the training wheels off and you stabilized <laughs> craig was like come on you could do it you can do it <laughs> i'm like down the sideline yeah Oh God! Anyway, yeah, he shit his pants. Um, it's pretty right. clearly. It's you okay. have like a spare pair of pants in the locker room that you can like run and go get on. I, I assume imagine so. Yeah, right? I gotta tell you, I actually so respect that he just stayed in the game. Between that and us seeing he Derek Henry's ass I was on say, Thursday, I don't think he probably didn't know. You think he didn't know? It's like sweaty yeah. down there. You, you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. Actually, you're right. I guess Someone you're playing NFL football. You tackled. Him. Yeah, you think if he knew, he would have left the game. Not if he was on. Not if he was. His team was on on the field. You know, if it was if it was time to play defense, no way. This is a Dan Campbell coach team. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, He's just like I'm well, playing. He did give a shit. Yeah, it's actually probably <laughs> makes him like harder to block. That yeah. should be the tagline for this team: the Lions. We give a shit. Mm. Yeah. All right. That's so great right there. Yeah. Okay. And Craig, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what was that? <laughs> That was the weirdest. Every, that that was game, truly every the weirdest single game. time Craig texts us, what the fuck is going on with these interceptions? There was another interception. Craig Dude, was they're... literally like texting us, complaining about the, the picks, and then it was it was like right where it was, I think Stroud threw one and then got I started turned complaining, and threw I think, one. when there was three total interceptions. I was like, Craig, don't look. <laughs> Turn away. <laughs> oh, Nasty God. game. I have to, I'm sorry, I have to just read the drive report, the, the drive by drive report, and the play by play. And, um, yeah. The, here, can I just read you what happened on each drive? Begin, this is from the beginning, the end of the first half. Interception, 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 punt, touchdown, interception, interception, punt, punt, punt. God. There were like five interceptions yeah. in like eight minutes of game time. If the Lions well, yeah. can win throwing five picks against I, what's supposed to be a good team, it really does feel like the, the two teams of destiny, Lions and the Chiefs. Yeah. Two teams that just can't lose, no matter what happens. Shout out Tyler Brooke, who called it plot armor <laughs> yeah. for the Lions and the Chiefs. I think my question is, DK, do you, do you think that this game was one, basically an aberration for Jared Goff? Do you think Jared Goff <laughs> might not be healthy, or do you think Farter that it's Shart. actually... You're asking fart or Shart. Yeah, fart or Shart, Jared Goff, and James Houston. Uh, I think it was a fart. I think it was a fart, especially mm -hmm. because they won. He can, like, you know, pun intended. He can flush this game well, I can't. And, and move on <laughs> with his life. Um, but yeah, like he's never this inaccurate. It was like bizarre. It, it did feel like he had the yips. I guess we'll know if he truly had the yips because he was just, he was, he was like skipping passes to dudes. Even when he wasn't throwing picks, he was just like really inaccurate. Um, so that was a really weird game. Golf had four incompletions last week. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to like, you know, go to the next game or whatever. You really don't notice the flaws in a player until you desperately need them in fantasy football. <laughs> Jared Goff, the one thing that stood out to me tonight was how how wide and long his stance is when he when he settles in to throw a pass. He looks <laughs> like a giraffe guy. out there. Yeah. The widest feet you can imagine. He brings yeah. the elbow all the way back Tebow style. He's like 6'4 and long. 
He, he's like basically takes over the whole pocket. No wonder the offensive line <laughs> has to be so good because he needs like an eight foot diameter to throw a pass. <laughs> uh, he's gonna be fine. He'll be fine. Five interceptions for Goff tonight. He threw four interceptions last season, which I just find incredible. He, I think I saw this as his first pick since week three. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, it's an aberration, I think. Hopefully, many aberrations, multi- <laughs> over and over the aberrations. Just like coming. a nightmare game. Yeah. yeah so DK, we, we'll start thinking of like another co-host to replace Craig when he quits. Well, I think Waddle's gonna really. Waddle's gonna bring imagine him back. if if Waddle brings me back and yes, I rise like I a phoenix. I cannot wait for this. <laughs> rise like a phoenix oh, on the God. back of Waddle. We'll be closely <laughs> watching that game. All right, let's get into winners and losers of the day. Craig, I feel like we got to start with your Steelers. Yeah, man. Yeah. We talked about this on Thursday. I was nervous about this game because I thought one team might get exposed, and I was worried it was Pittsburgh. I don't think any team got exposed, really. Uh, I mean, the Steelers were down 10 in the second half and came back. I-, I think what this game told me is, like, do I think the Steelers are in Tier 1 of contenders? No. But I think they are firmly in Tier 2, and the Steelers have an identity. This is a vibe season. Everyone is on board. The defense, the offense, everybody can feel it. Russ is doing the Seahawks thing. He's pulling shit yeah. out of his ass. And honestly, he's very Steelersy. At least like, you, you know, the, playing up or down to your competition. A lot of late game antics. Pulling shit out of your butt. Kind of serious. <laughs> <laughs> is it James Houston? This is just, I'm just like, that's the theme of the whole week is pulling is. shit pulling out of your shit ass. Out of your butt. But like, doesn't, yeah. like, I feel like Russ in moments kind of shares similar vibes to Big Ben. Not really in stylistically at all, but just in terms of like antics, extended plays, late game heroics. And you have to kind of just trust the process because it can look really bad at some points and then at other points look amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was incredible. And then, of course, my guy with the cherry on top, Mike Williams, winning the game and letting out a shriek of a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I, this is what I was trying to tell you about the Russell Wilson experience. I will admit right off the bat, like he's played better than I think I expected or anybody probably expected, um, maybe except for Mike Tomlin. Um, but I, I, I used to have this bit where I retweeted every time the Seahawks won a game. It was just like familiar feeling following another Seahawks win misery <laughs> because it was just like the whole game is a pile of shit. And then Wilson finds a way to like win it right at the end. And this is like such a Russell Wilson thing that the, the fact that the Dan Quinn led uh, commanders, like they didn't, they didn't zero blitz him. I think they had like one guy is like a cover one blitz uh, at the, that was the Mike Williams touchdown. I'm like, why would you do that to Russell Wilson? He's beaten that play so many times in his career. That's like, you're just asking for a touchdown to be thrown. And it was like Russell Wilson. He saw that the blitz was coming. It was like all out blitz. And the safety was shaded over to pick inside. So it's just like, I'm throwing it Pickens had caught a touchdown in the right corner of the end zone earlier. Yeah. Safety and this shaded is what that way. Having Mike Williams and George Pickens on either side can do. The funny yeah. thing about that play is the only reason Mike, Mike Williams was in is because Calvin Austin got injured and he was supposed to be running that route, Mike Williams said after the game. Oh, Mike Williams had right. not even practiced running that. And Russ on the sideline told him what to do. So if that was Calvin Austin, who's like a foot shorter, he probably doesn't catch that ball. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, and and I think Mike Williams is going to start playing that role from now on. Like, they, they were definitely easy to in. I think he only played, like, 12 snaps. snaps or something. He played nine yeah. snaps in that game. Also, you got to shout out the defense. They let up 27 points, but it, it felt better than that. There was, yeah. a, you know, the Steelers had a horrible fake punt drop that basically gave the Commanders a free touchdown, but the Commanders had the most punts they've had all season. They had the least amount of total yards, the least rushing yards per carry. Jaden Daniels only ran for five yards in this game. The Steelers defense. It did, yeah, it did feel great. like they bottled them up. By the way, speaking of that punt, that fake punt that didn't work, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like this this special teams coach for the Steelers, who I'd never seen before in my life, never heard of him before, yeah. Danny Smith, is that mm-hmm. his name? Mm-hmm. He's got more screen time this year than I think yeah. any other coach in the NFL. I've, I see this guy every week, like going around, like dapping up everybody. Like get, he had like a big scar, like he, he'd got like headbutted or something today. Yeah. Like he's like bleeding from the cheek, like. Who is this guy? It feels like an industry plant. He's just like, we need a special team to coach. That's fun, <laughs> you know? It's also like the work. Tomlin is so bad at calling fourth down, man. I, what, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. We we're on, their, on our own 10. And we're I think it, my theory, and well, maybe the, they talked about it after the game, and I just didn't see it. Was like, it was just like an automatic check. Like they saw something in the defense, maybe. Or did they say that they like wanted to do that play? Did you see? Well, the play said, was fine. The play worked. The guy just dropped the ball. He just dropped it. But like, yeah. you don't. 
You don't. You know do, what? I what mean, if he catches it? Then you're thrilled. What do you mean you don't? No, do it? I actually don't. Th- if he catches it, I'm like, we got super lucky there. That was playing Russian roulette, and I would never do that again. He was wide open. <laughs> Dude, it was. We were on our own ten. Well, <laughs> that's why I think it was a check worked. because it was just wide open. I, I, I think know. that uh, the other thing we have to just before we move on from the Steelers game. Russell Wilson with the most try hard victory of all time where they actually did like how many times do you see teams line up on fourth and one try to get the defense oh to jump God. off sides yeah. like a thousand times in a row until that works with the game on the line literally the difference between the Steelers running out the clock or giving Jaden Daniels back the ball with the chance to win the game all they needed was field goal Russell Wilson literally gets the rookie Johnny Newton from Washington to jump off sides. Oh, brutal. That was I that was the most obvious they're not going to run a play. Right. I like like honestly they shouldn't have forget I I, don't, I can't believe that actually worked. It was so annoying to see Russell Wilson actually get to do that, frankly. I don't know. But I thought it was fun. I thought it, it was, was cool like Russell he got him to jump and then he like just took off running towards yeah. the sideline, like hyping everybody he up. He did like I'm a like, little <laughs> dance. I mean, he's still not cool, but it's fun. I have fun. Yeah. I I admitted it. I I was like pretty into that moment. It was fun. So yeah, Steelers. They, yeah, twenty to twenty seven. Went DK, over Washington. do you miss it a little bit watching this? Yeah, like, man, abs- absolutely, man. Like it, it was a little nostalgic seeing Russell <laughs> hit like those moon balls because that's just like that's what he's always done. You know what I mean? Like he just is so he can pull defeat out of the jaws of victory. What? What is? What's the pull, pull, pull victory, victory, out, victory out, of out of the jaws, of, the jaws of, defeat. of defeat? He also did the other side. The other Speaking side. of, yeah, <laughs> he did pull. He, he's done a little bit of both. But, you know, like he's just he's, he has me. that he has that magic to him that is very. It's like intoxicating. So 100%, I was really into it. It's fun. It's cool to see him like doing so well. Clearly, the team is bought in around him. Yeah. He's perfect for pickings. Um, if you look at his, his spray chart for his for like where he's passing, it's like, I mean, he's just only passing to the sidelines, literally. It's like they're not doing anything in the middle of the field, especially deep. But And so I think that limits them, especially when they're losing. But yeah, it's just it's it's fun. I, I, I'm I'm into it. So, well, speaking of magic, though, and pulling victory from the jaws of defeat... My winner for the day is the Kansas City Chiefs in whatever dark magic they practice and whatever satanic worship that Patrick Mahomes has made a deal with the devil because the Chiefs are the Patriots now. Uh, The Chiefs beat the Broncos today, 16 to 14. The Broncos were down. They they had them. They had them. The Broncos were down Mm -hmm. two points with one second left. All they had to do is hit a field goal. They had is a 35 yard field goal. That is basically an extra point. One second on the clock. You kick this extra point basically and you win the game. And Chiefs linebacker Leo Chanel blocks the field goal for the walk a guy off win. over. Yeah. Well, pancaked, I think it's Alex Forsyth, who I believe is the starting center now for the Broncos, pancaked him and won. So, well, first of all, they won the game. Chiefs are now 9-0. and Best start to the season in the history of the Kansas City Chiefs, mm-hmm. which is unbelievable because, frankly, the Chiefs kind of played like shit. And you know what? Patrick Mahomes played like shit. The Chiefs, well, not played like shit, but he didn't play well. Right. And honestly, the Broncos totally outplayed the Chiefs. And if they had just made this goddamn kick, we'd be talking about how the Broncos outplayed them. And I kind of still want to talk about that because I've been hard on Kent, uh, on Denver. I Craig was right. Craig got on the Sean Payton bandwagon at the right time. Oh, Denver boy. totally <laughs> kicked Kansas City's ass that. today. Yeah, I dude. can't believe they lost. I was really excited. They were winning the whole game. I was like, ah, this is so I'm on the Sean Payton bandwagon. He's doing weird stuff. <laughs> Bo Nix actually gets better every week. Yeah. yeah. Disappointing. Bo Nix played great. The defense played great. And I mean, the, the defense is ready. The defense yeah. is ready. And frankly, I actually think the they Sean Bates coaching. Mahomes. Yeah, they really did. Uh, all their defenders are fa- doing fantastic. And then if you look at the offense, frankly, they're coached really well. Sean Payton's playing really aggressively, even getting the shit kicked out of him by Baltimore last week. Sean Payton went for a fourth down like three times in the first half. Like he's not coaching afraid at all. And then I, I think if they have better talent on offense next year in some certain spots, I think it's going to be a really good team. But if you just look, I mean, Mahomes today, you're totally right. He was harassed, but also oh, totally overthrew or just missed Xavier Worthy and what should have been a wide open touchdown. He threw, he threw the ball out of bounds. bounds. He yeah. overthrew Kelsey on what should have been a touchdown in the end zone. Like I, I just, and then I, I admittedly want Wanya Morris, the left tackle for them got hurt and he was in and out and Kings is ties a rookie. But regardless, I, I, I don't know. I can't believe this is the most like you thought you had the Chiefs dead to rights. And honestly, am I crazy? They're the Patriots now. Like every mm-hmm. time you think you have this freaking team, it's like they're unkillable. I think this season, um, we are witnessing their their transition from hero to villain. Yes. <laughs> I think everybody was still having a good time, even though they were winning a lot. 
they won number three last year. I still think it was like, this is so cool. This is so fun. Everyone's likable on this team. The Taylor Swift thing was novel and exciting. And now it's like, all right, this is no longer cool. They're winning games. They don't even look good. The Taylor Swift thing has gone from fun to kind of obnoxious. And everything is working out. It's like the, the guy you know who you hated in high school who's actually just rich and successful and hot. And it just continues to get better. He and didn't better. peak in high school. Damn it! <laughs> He's just continuing to Shit. peak. <laughs> no, you're a hundred percent right. I hundred percent. Yeah, no. I, I, sick I, of it now. And if there was a moment that Chiefs became villains, it might be today because mm-hmm. everyone's sick of it. I also have to say, Leo Chanel, who blocked the extra point or the kick today, not even mm-hmm. his best block of the year. He blocked an extra point in the, an extra point in the Super Bowl against the Niners. And guess what? They went to overtime. And they won in overtime. So if he didn't block that extra point, the Chiefs lose the Super Bowl. So he's done that twice this year. Yeah, on a this kick is, that's what, like 30 this is yards. what championship teams have. Yeah. They have guys that make plays in all three phases. And w- when one phase isn't playing very well, the other one does play well or whatever, makes big plays. I know it's like a total cliche, but the, the Chiefs are just a walking cliche at this point. They just find ways to win every week. Yeah. DK, who's your loser for the day? Um, the Colts. And Joe Flacco's legacy or reputation or whatever. Like, I think when, you know, early in the season he came in and immediately everything got better, he should have just gotten hurt or something. And people would be like, Joe Flacco's awesome. He's great. Um, but now that he's actually playing more and a lot, he's not very good. It Familiarity breeds contempt. Yeah. Um, yeah. He threw, what was it? Three picks today. Plus, I think he lost a fumble. His first pass of the day was a pick six. Correct. Yeah, that was tough. I believe tough way to start. Two, I think he was two for five with two picks to start the game, and he should have had five picks. There was two drop balls. I mean, if I had told you the Colts quarterback would throw a, a pick six in his first pass, the Colts quarterback would throw a pick on a screen, the Colts quarterback would throw a pick overthrowing Alec Pierce, and then two other interceptions in the red zone would be dropped, you'd be like, wow, Anthony Richardson played terribly. They should play Joe Flacco. Yeah. But DK, that was Joe Flacco. I know, and it's like, it, at, at this point, it, I don't really care what he brings. Like, I think Shane Steichen after the game mentioned like leadership and and veteran veteranosity or whatever. You know, like just like veteranosity veteran that he that he brings that veteran leadership. I'm like, dude, who cares? You turned it all. You turned the ball over four times. You cannot win with four turnovers unless you're the Lions. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so I don't know unless you're what was his name? Sinkwich. To Frankie Sinkwich. Yeah, unless you're Frankie Sinkwich. Joe Flacco is no Frankie. You know, Sinkwich. He, he's no Frankie Sinkwich. Um, so I don't know, man. And and then after the game, Steichen was kind of sticking to it. I, I think he maybe left the door open a little bit more than he has in the last couple of weeks, but, um, for, for Richardson to come back, but yeah, man, this just feels weird. It, it feels like doing this with Flacco, you're going to lose the fans because at, at, at one point I think it was like, it made sense. Like this is a team that wants to win and there's veterans on the team that like want to compete and, and whatever, but like. I don't know, man. This this just feels like a losing strategy at this point. Not only will you lose the fans, I think you'll start to lose the locker room too. Yeah, Spl- too. I mean, the whole reason yeah. why Flacco was playing was he, sub- he was supposed to be the steady hand who could move you down the field and limit dumb plays and limit turnovers. He's right. not doing that at all. I, and, he, and he brings no upside now. If, if Unless there's something going on with Anthony Richardson that we're kind of unaware of, if he's not starting next week, this is complete malpractice from the court, Colts organization. Right. Yeah, it's I, just I, weird. I, I totally agree, Craig. And also, I, I, yeah, they have to start to Richard. I mean, this is pathetic. There's no argument to start Flacco with that with this level of play. And then to your point about the locker room, so Kenny Moore, who's a cornerback who's been in Indianapolis for for a long time, he's he's the uh, captain of the defense in Indianapolis, which I think is it's super underrated who's a captain or not. And Kenny Moore said this after the game to the Indianapolis Star. Kenny Moore said, I don't think everybody is working as hard as possible. And obviously, it is showing. I'm not the type to sugarcoat it. Honestly, I don't think the urgency is there. I don't think the details are there. I don't think the effort is there. And I don't see everything correlating from the meetings to practice to the games. And it shows. End quote. Hmm. Yeah, Brutal. It's a brutal yeah. thing from the captain of your team. I feel like there's been a lot of like the, the team isn't trying storylines or narratives this year. You know what I mean? It's like the Raiders, yeah. the Pats, the Colts. I don't. I feel like there's been a lot of situations where these players are like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if the locker room really is feeling it. Well, you were year. talking about it like earlier this week. There's like seven to it teams. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's related, right? Teams, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean more than that. I mean, yeah, there were there were, there were nine. There were nine. There, that's nine. more than yeah, a quarter yeah. of the league with two wins. That's. I think it's hard to. I think that it's the most underrated thing is how fucking depressing it is to lose an NFL game and go another week till you play another one. And like when you lose four games in a row. That's a month where everyone and everyone you work with is completely depressed. 
for a month. And it, it just a quarter of the league has been like that. It's really depressing. Speaking of which, um, <laughs> Craig, who's your loser? The Bears, dude. Ugh. My God. Yeah. They lost 19 to three to the Patriots. Awful game. Caleb threw for 120 yards on he was 16 for 30. No touchdowns. He hasn't thrown a touchdown since week six. The team has zero touchdown. The team has zero touchdowns since the Hail Mary. Caleb, had, he was sacked nine times today. Leads the league in sacks. The, there was a point where the Patriots defenders were like helping him up and tapping him on the helmet, being like, dude, that's hey man, so, we're, we're sorry, feel sorry about this. for you. Yeah. That's <laughs> actually like, like the pity? most disrespectful <laughs> yeah. thing when the yeah. defenders are like, dude, it you was need some bad. help out here. Uh, but. <laughs> Yeah. At least CJ Stroud waits till after the game to tap C- to tap Caleb on I that. know, right? Even the announcers now, it's like Caleb's not playing well, but he's not being helped at all. The, even the announcers now are starting to talk about how the play calling is so bad. Players are running to the same parts of the field. Running backs are blocking the wrong sides of the protection. It's just a mess. Dude, yeah. I, I, I like that you said, first of all, I like that you just said that. No one knows who to fucking block on the Chicago Bears. No yeah. one knows who to block. No, Keaton out. Like, I, I'm not going to criticize the name's effort. But I will just say, when no one knows their assignment, you hesitate. And hesitation can look like you're not trying. Everyone on the Bears is always hesitating. No one knows who to block. Keenan Allen doesn't know who to block. The offensive line doesn't know who to block. That is like a huge ick, huge red flag on the coaching staff. I also just want to say the score of this game again. The Bears lost 19-3 to to the New England Patriots. They were six-point favorites. They only scored three, the three points. The Bears have... <laughs> 21 straight drives without a touchdown. 21 yeah. straight drives. Chicago has not scored. This is a team that would have been five and two if they had won that Hail Mary game versus Washington. Instead, they are four and five and now functionally, I mean, not out of the playoffs, but they seem like it. And, and every playoffs. Yeah. Well, playoffs. But if they'd won that game, they would have been five and two. Yeah. You playoffs. start thinking playoffs. Playoffs. And, yeah. You want, yeah. You're right. Hyman. Their last five games. They've played the Pats, the the Cardinals, the Commanders, the Jags, and the Panthers, and they went two and three. Their next five games, they they play the entire NFC North. They play the their next three Eat. games are Packers, Vikings, Lions, and then they go Niners, Vikings, Lions again. I can't stress Eat. enough that they just absolutely blew the easiest part of their schedule. Yeah, it's cooked. Um, it's over. I'm gonna say like the really obvious thing here. I think that Shane Waldron's getting fired. Uh Oh yeah, he might be fired by the time this podcast. Comes I know, right, dude? Like, he, it, honestly, it, he should be. And honestly, Matt Eberflus, the head coach of the Bears, should also be fired. And yeah. either I don't care if it's now or at the end of the season, but it's I not think, serious. Yeah, like when you get a, I think when you get a team that is this demoralized and the vibes are this atrocious, and no one is, no one has any like fire or passion. It's like something has to change. Like it's a coaching. It's it comes down to coaching, and then like I, obviously the team needs like some more leadership to step up or whatever, but. This team has no identity, no juice. The vibes are atrocious. And I think everybody's starting to catch on like Shane Waldron, just not the man for the job in terms of like what, like designing an offense that's going to suit Caleb Williams and like Dude, help I, get the most out of him. Um, Shane he's Waldron, like terrible, but like the play calling is also awful. This, the protection sucks. He got he's been sacked uh, six plus times in back to back games. First time since 93. A Bears team has done that. Think about that. Um and so I don't know, man. And the Bears it, have been terrible. <laughs> I know, dude. And also, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, I think obviously, obviously, something has to change. I think it, it makes a ton of sense for them to fire at least Waldron. Well, we've known about game. the Shane Waldron thing since literally at the freaking Super Bowl in February. JSN. Jackson yeah. Smith and Jigba. <laughs> Shane Waldron came from Seattle, and they asked Jackson Smith and Jigba, "What should Bears fans know about Shane Waldron uh, coming in?" And he was like, "Is this live?" And if you don't know what we're talking is about, the, is the best response. Kai, play yeah. the exchange for the people who don't know what we're talking about, please. Bears fans are super interested about the offensive coordinator coming in, Shane Waldron. What can you tell them about who they just hired to to uh, try to get this offense where it needs to go? Um, uh, oh. this, is, this is live. Yeah, <laughs> we're not live. We're not. Live. I'm playing. Um, <laughs> uh, good luck to y'all. I mean, he, he's a he's a great person. He's a great person. He's a great person. <sighs> That's so bad. Shane Waldron feels like the guy, type of guy. Once he gets fired, he's not going to get hired again. Like he's going to college, or right. he's but. That's the thing, though, is that with the Bears, and I know we're beating them to death, but everyone, like, I can't stress this enough. Every first of all, what is coaching if not the whole should be greater than the sum of the parts? The Bears' whole is much less than the sum of the parts. Number one, everyone at every level of the Bears is bad at hiring people. The ownership is an absolute mess. The kids are a disaster at running the team. 
GM Ryan Poles is terrible at evaluating. He traded a 30-second pick in the draft for Chase Claypool, and then they just traded fourth for Keenan Allen instead of keeping Darnell Mooney. They can't evaluate talent. The coaching, they hired Matt Eberflus. I always forget about that, that Mooney Matt, left. Yeah. yeah. Matt Eberflus hired his first offensive coordinator was Luke Getze. Luke Getze, no offense to Luke Getze, has been fired twice this year. He got fired by the Bears and the Raiders this year. And his second hire, <laughs> Shane Waldron, who'll yeah. probably be fired like Monday morning. So, like, no one can hire anyone it's in this it, entire organization. The Walter thing was always weird to me, too, because it's like the Seahawks were just like, sure, yeah, go ahead. Hire him. Dude, terrible you sign. Yeah, like you won't do it. They, they did not try to keep him whatsoever. I know that yeah, they had a new coaching staff, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think, like, and somebody, I can't remember who said it on the broadcast, but I thought it was just, like, really on point. It's like everything feels really hard. For the for the for the Bears right now, it's like nothing is easy. There is no easy button. There's nothing yeah. that they can do that makes things easy. He's getting sacked. Uh, Caleb Williams is getting sacked on almost every play. Like immediate pressure. I, I understand that Williams is like not playing well either. But like, give him a few layups. Get like get the rhythm going. Like this is what good coaches do. It's like they help their players get out of like funks like this. And there's just like no way they don't have any answers to help him get out of this. And luckily, they have play the Packers next week, who they lost ten straight games to. My loser is anybody who played against Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow and um, also me <laughs> um, yeah. variously. But yeah, so Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow were the Oppenheimer Award for the player who went nuclear this week because Jamar Chase had 11 catches for 264 yards and three touchdowns. So it's 50 points in half PPR, 55 in full PPR, I think. Joe Burrow, 428 yards, four touchdown passes, number one quarterback in the, in the uh, NFL this week. Joe Burrow leads the NFL in passing yards. Jamar Chase, I believe, still currently has the NFL triple crown leading the league and catches yards and touchdowns. Can you guys imagine if some moron had just spent the whole summer <laughs> saying, don't draft the Bengals, mm. whining about the wrist injury with Joe Burrow and only the dumbest stupidest moron could have possibly said, perhaps don't consider drafting the two most fun players in the NFL, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. What you should have done is, you, you, the lesson to learn is you just got to save it for the take purge where there's no responsibility for it. Yeah. That's what you needed to do. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy that Joe Burrow has thrown for nine touchdowns and one pick in two games against the Ravens this year, and he lost They've both. Lost both. It's, dude, it's like oh. the inverse of the fucking what's his name thing, yes. the yeah. the Sinkworth or what's his what Sink Sinkwich. Frank Sinkwich. Frank Sinkwich. 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 Yeah, nine touchdowns and you lose. <laughs> uh, I will say, I so Joe Burrow. Uh, honestly, the whole Burrow me thing started when Joe Burrow said he was contemplating his football mortality. And now I'm contemplating my football mortality because I think I'm going to get like killed with pitchforks by everybody who didn't I'm, have Jamar I'm Chase. I'm contemplating my fantasy football mortality. So yeah. we're all kind of all going right. It today. Calm down, calm down. Um, Burrow, I, Burrow is a little emo. I feel like <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, is it the hair his, hanging over one his of his feels. eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bangs. He's he's a intellectual. You know, he he feels things more than the most quarterbacks. I will say though, he's again, really good though. Clearly. But just to recap the thing, Burrow, he ruptured the keystone ligament in his wrist and no NFL quarterback that we're aware of and they could find and anyone could find has ever had this injury and he couldn't. So we're like, there's no precedent for this injury. So we're like, well, what's going on with Joe? Because there's no other timeline to look to. So it's like, well, what's going on with Joe is he can't throw three days in a row. He couldn't throw deep for the final three weeks of August. He's fussing with his wrist after May, June, July, and August. Can't he's every time he's water bottle. He water, yeah, water bottle. No, but he's just <laughs> messing with his wrist at all times of the day. And I'm like, well, there's no precedent. So it's kind of weird that water, no water precedent. Watergate, Watergate oh, water is my Roman Empire. Yeah, Watergate is picking up water bottles. But <laughs> my whole argument was if there's no precedent. Like you fucking weirdos. He's not cooked because he can't pick up a water bottle. But my whole thing was if there's no precedent, why is there no discount? And well, there is a precedent now. So he's fine. And so, well, um, knock on wood, knock on wood. My bad. No, I will he say did, I think he the, did injure his left arm in this game. That's true. Uh, I, I, I will just say, though, because be right. I, I do genuinely think I owe people an apology because uh, the Josh Jacobs thing a couple years ago, I think that was bad process. The Mike Davis thing was bad process. I think this one, actually, I still think it was a good process, but it uh, doesn't matter because I was Didn't fucking wrong. Out. So I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I'm sorry to everyone who doesn't have Jamar Chase, which I assume is literally everybody listening to the show. Can you can you also apologize for going on the Bill Simmons podcast and passionately advising that everybody bet on the New York Giants. <laughs> no, that worked. The Giants lost, and now they could get the top two pick in the draft. So that was a great reverse jinx by me.
Oh, I see. Okay, called so it. I called it. You wanted everybody to lose all their money and then also the Giants get the first pick in the draft. Not all your money. You didn't put all your money on it, did you? Hopefully. You, you, I think you said something like bet 10,000, all the money you have, I think you said. That was verbatim. <laughs> well, but uh, yeah, I did do that. I did, I did bet the Giants. <laughs> I did do that. <laughs> I did bet the Giants and the Eagles, which the Eagles worked out, but I parlayed them. So I mean, Thank I'll you. just, I, dude, it's so over right off the top. Daniel Jones, it is so over for Daniel Jones. Dude, that was it's the worst over. Over. We, We've been saying it's over for years. It's, no, but it's like, been over. It, it's no. always been over. I think it's uh, literally over. Like, I don't think he'll start. It's always been over. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> Fast and Furious. You I never mean, had we, your car. Every week, Hyphen shows up. He's like, I don't think Daniel Jones is very good. <laughs> like, yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying, that. like, I don't think he'll ever start for the Giants ever again. Like, I I, I think he's never going to start another game. Really? Barring injury. I think that they're going to bench him for Drew Locke. The problem I think is Drew Locke is so bad. I know, but they want to lose. And at this point, like, Daniel Jones, at this point, it's like, it, that was the most embarrassing. I think that was the most embarrassing game of his career. I think that was Why the worst game Tommy of his Cutlets career. Why not throw Tommy Cutlets out there? Isn't he still on a team? He's like practice squad. He's but the no, draft it's the injury killer, guarantee. Though. You can't do that. He'll win a few games. That's true. Exactly. That's true. Yeah, he fucked us up the first time. But I, Daniel Jones, I, I the, he missed. He it started with a clean pocket. He threw a ball over Malik Neighbors' head by ten yards. Like he had clean pockets the whole game. The flea flicker where he missed Malik Neighbors. I don't know. I, I frankly, it's so oh, embarrassing. The flea flicker. That I was the out, moment we all knew. That can I tell that you? That was guys? the beginning of the end, or the end of the end. I don't think a shitty quarterback has consistently started more games to begin their career than Daniel Jones. Yeah, I I I realized today that watching a Giants game while other people are all watching this Giants game because they were the, the Germany game. It's it's the same feeling I have when you're like taking a shit and someone walks into the bathroom on you. You're just like absolutely humiliated, and you're just like you know, like it's so embarrassing. I feel seen. Have you ever yeah, like I feel you ever seen. look at your dog while it's taking a shit, and he yeah. like is so he's so <laughs> self conscious. He yeah, that's how I feel when like I'm watching the Giants and I'm like, oh my god, other people are also seeing this. It's humiliating. This is anyway. good, though. Ultimately, now you have the second pick right now in the draft. Just just lose out. All right. DK. Not the first? No, Jacksonville. No. Ja uh, well, it doesn't matter because it's by the end of the season. They just have to lose out and they'll be fine. DK, it's so over. We're so back. They just have to lose out and we'll be fine. Uh, it's so o The Cowboys are so over. The Cowboys are cooked. And Jerry Jones is absolutely cooked. Okay, first off, let's start with the game. Uh, 146 yards, 49 total passing yards in this game. from Cooper Also, the Rush. score. Uh. It doesn't matter if they lost by a lot. What is, you, what 34 was to six. 6. The Eagles won 34 to 6 over Dallas. Yeah. Not a close game uh, in any fashion. 2.6 yards per play. Uh, according to Shield Kapadia, this was the best defensive performance by any team in a game this season. The, the Cowboys had 13 possessions. They gave the ball away five times and scored zero touchdowns. Um, and I think just the funniest story in all of professional sports right now is this fucking sun thing coming in and blinding people in every week. The Cowboys, I feel like, I, I know that it hasn't happened every week, but it feels like every week a, a Cowboys player misses like a huge play <laughs> because he's getting absolutely blinded by the sun because they refuse to put up curtains in this stupid stadium well, that they designed. Why did they even build it that way? Like yeah. Jerry was just like, did Jerry Jones basically think that if they build it this way, then they'll be the only team that knows that. And then every time there's a coin toss, they'll just get the the, the, the ball when there's no sun like that. What the yeah. fuck was he thinking? I don't understand it. He And he's like still defending it really, really hard. Basically like Jerry Jones after the, after the game was like, first of all, you, you got to just listen to like what Jerry Jones says because it, he sounds insane. He's like, the world knows where the sun is. You get to know <laughs> that almost a year in advance. I, I would argue you'd know it more than a year in advance. <laughs> Someone asked me about the sun. What about the sun? Where's the moon? This guy is cooked. He's he's running this team. Wait, um, say, wait what did he say? Say it again. Someone Where's asked me the about moon? the sun. Somebody asked me about the sun. What about the sun? Where's the moon? Um, you almost Jerry Jones, it's a good point. Defense. Jerry Jones defending. First of all, let's just this the sunk cost thing. They built the stadium. It is where it is. The windows are where they are. They, it, I, I want to be clear, very it's not clear. An accident. They did it on purpose. Right. However, they're not going to move the stadium. Right. I want to be very clear. <laughs> we take the key <laughs> bottom and we move it somewhere else. No, they put they put curtains up for other events in the stadium. They do. Wait, yeah. Really? They put curtains up. Get yes. They the fuck have out. curtains. They have so the technology. Basically, Jerry Jones is just too stubborn to put the fucking curtains up. It reminds me of the you know the I think you should leave thing where he's like, uh, it's a push door. He's like, no, it's actually it's both. 
and then he just like yanks the door off of the freaking frame because he just doesn't want to like it, this is what Jerry Jones is doing with these fucking curtains. Just put the curtains up. Yes, they apparently use the curtains for concerts and other non football no events. You have the curtains. Way. <laughs> what are you doing? Every week a guy gets freaking blinded. CD Lamb, for for the record, by the way, CD Lamb totally missed a touchdown because he couldn't see the ball it, like when it was coming towards him. And this he, is- by the way, he was asked. What's your feeling on the curtain? Or he's like, are you in favor of curtains? Somebody asked him that. Are you pro curtains? Do you are respect, you in favor of curtains? Do you respect wood? <laughs> he's like, a thousand percent. I'm not the one making the choice. I respect wood. Look, I think this is very relatable. I think Jerry's position is very relatable. It's like I, that story I told a few years back about in college, my friend and I got an argument about the pronunciation of the word impotent. And he said impotent. <laughs> And he knew he was wrong. And He's look, taking he, it to the grave. Yeah, he had a decision to make in that moment. Do I do I admit my my how wrong I was, or do I double down? Jerry doubled down. And well, you, you know, know what? what? It's, they, it, it's bet on it's worked been, for him his whole life, dude. Heifetz and I have been tweeting about this since 2019. Dude. I've I look back at some of our tweets. <laughs> they built We're about the guys stadium blinded five years ago. It's the dumbest thing in <laughs> in football right now. Think about the conversation because the converse they they did it on purpose. Like it's you designed the, the stadium thing. to allow that sunlight in. They built the stadium. And the conversation is basically, we're going to blind the other team. And then no one had the balls to say to Jerry, what if we blind ourselves? <laughs> what if we like, lose no, the coin we'll toss? know about it because it's, it's our home stadium. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll just have He's the like, ball it's always at own- 430. Yeah, Jerry's like, it's our own stadium. And nobody else, no one knows where the sun is going to be except us. We know a year in advance. We have a what, year do, in advance. <laughs> what do we think about this? You get to know that almost a year in advance. Don't they know where the sun's going to be like a thousand <laughs> years in advance? Just yeah, based no, on like they, the fucking, I don't know. Is it, yeah, I, they I'm not that, a, they have that I don't know shit that, a lot. But I, I but think that's like a thing. I think what makes it funnier <laughs> is the fact that he says we know about that almost a year in advance, which implies <laughs> that like <laughs> there is some, there is <laughs> some like, specific year. formula that he is aware of that we're not. It depends yeah. how windy it's it like, is. It's about like 330 savings. days in advance. We know the tra- we I, find out the trajectory of the sun. I want to leave it open to maybe we don't know how the sun works. Um, we definitely know how the sun works. The entirety of human society is advance. built around it. That's almost, what <laughs> almost a year in advance is when we find out. <laughs> There's what the an fuck does that mean? <laughs> What does he know? Some, that's when they announce it. Yeah, is yeah. there some like secret billionaire meeting where they discuss where the sun's going every year? I oh don't know. shit, Craig! We're the the flat earthers are going to. Is have this an Illuminati thing, thing? I don't yeah. know. It's- Email us at riggerfantasyfootball at gmail.com if you're a scientist or whatever and you know how far this we know about the sun or in advance. I'm pretty Maybe sure it's like it, thousands What if it really is a little less than a year in advance? <laughs> no, it's we'll definitely find out where not. The like, it's definitely more than that. We have daylight savings. The, whole, the, extra, the reason we have a leap year is that a leap year is yeah. that every year is actually 365 days in six hours, but that's too complicated. So then yeah. every- Did the, May- the Mayans knew where the sun was going to be the relative Mayans to fucking Jerry knew. World. Yeah, like- the Mayans figured that shit out. <laughs> yeah. They've Maybe, known this for thousands of years. The Egyptians figured this shit out. Oh no one told God. Jerry. Maybe maybe Jerry has access to some old Mayan book that says that a, a, a little less than a year in advance. Honestly, he probably would. Wait, speaking <laughs> speaking of other wait, hold on. But we also we have to talk about how so it's obviously so obviously veterans veter, you're listening to this on Veterans Day. And the Cowboys had uh, they honored some people on their giant video screen, which are uh, the other things, features the stadium has is a scoreboard so low punters can hit the ball right, with, under the screen. Dude. And on How much giant, did the stadium cost? Like a billion dollars. <laughs> and it was before that was when that was a lot of money. Right. And this team, this is a company allegedly worth $10 billion. They're blind. They're players. Anyway, Jerry Jones. I love it. They, on their giant video screen, they honored veterans, including Tom Landry, who's like the most important coach in Cowboys history. One of the most important people in the history of the NFL, Tom Landry, who's a World War II veteran. They spelled his name Tom Laundry. Oh, okay. They put Tom, the wheels thank are falling you for off. your service, Tom Laundry, <laughs> on Our their giant video screen. <laughs> We got no curtains. L- luckily, we got a low scoreboard. <laughs> L- luckily, nobody could read we the screen. We can't spell right. Nobody could read the screen because there was a strong glare from the sun. So it's yeah, fine. that's the worst when the sun's like right on your TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Curtains oh are in the laundry. God, I love it. Anyway. The best is like like it's always the same time. The games are always the same time. Like the sun's going to be shining through it directly in the third quarter every freaking day. I love that. God. 
Anyway, uh, are you pro- right, are Craig. you are you for curtains? What's your what's your position on <laughs> I curtains? Didn't know they had the curtains already. I thought oh, they had like to add the curtains. Are you in favor of curtains? Was a question that was asked a player today. I love. Do you respect the best what? the best receiver in the NFL? <laughs> I'd ask that. Should they block the sun? Anyway, Craig, who's, yeah, it's so over. We're so back. It's 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 so over for the Jets. They lost thirty one oh, yeah. to six today to the Cardinals. And Rodgers, man, Rodgers is so afraid of being hit that he's ruining his offense. Like, he can't hold on to the ball. He, Austin Gale of the Ringer, our pal, put out a tweet saying that this year, Rodgers has the shortest time to throw in the league. It's also the shortest time to throw of Rodgers his entire career. And he's like directing traffic. It's like all these miscommunications because he's telling people what to do on the fly. It kind of reminds me of that SNL sketch with Peyton Manning with the kids. And he's just dropping back and like firing (laughs) the ball into a kid's back. Oh my God, that is yelling at him. That is what the current Aaron Rodgers jet situation is like right now. Except Devontae Adams. He never yells at Devontae Adams. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. It's brutal. The the miscommunication, it just feels like it's impossible to please. He's like running an offense that can't be solved. (laughs) You know how Aaron Rodgers excommunicated Mike Williams? Mike Williams said more touchdowns today than the Jets. Oh my God, that's (laughs) right. That's number one. Love Two, that. DK, you texted us a stat today that if you just look at the average of basically the Zach Wilson era of the Jets for the last three seasons, Zach Wilson played and the Aaron Rodgers through 10 games. The difference between Aaron Rodgers and the exact and the Zach Wilson era is exactly the same amount of points per game and one more passing yard per game. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> has added An one more yard. passing yard per game. That has been the Aaron Rodgers contribution it, and zero I, more points per game. I think that sometimes like year to year and even week to week, it's hard to it's hard to put into context the NFL because we're just so like myopic about like what happened today. You know what I mean? That is like the best piece of context. Like the Jets offense under Zach Wilson was completely inept. Like they couldn't complete a pass barely. And this is the same amount of points and yards as that offense. Like that context alone is like mind blowing to me. And I do want to just shout out the Cardinals really quick because the Cardinals played really well. Kyler Murray had 17 straight completions. I mean, honestly, the Kyler didn't hit his first pass of the day. The Jets defense did not. He forced one more incompletion the rest of the game. So like firing Robert Sala looks like a joke in retrospect. The Cardinals did whatever they wanted on offense today. The Cardinals are playing really well as well. They they kind of got me feeling nice yeah, a little yeah. bit, but like the Car- the Cardinals were fantastic. But mostly the Jets are a dumpster fire. Okay, any uh, any either it's over over so we're back or I, I think it's no I think it's I think it's time for um Farter Sharp, which mm. really I mean is Farter Sharp having a moment? Some would some would ask. This is a special, especially farty or sharty Apex week. I, I, I get to ask you fuckers some uh, farter shirt this week, okay? Um, Craig, I think Craig should shirt. answer. What's that? I think yeah, I think Craig should answer. Yeah, Craig, farter shirt. Sam Darnold, mm. twenty four of thirty eight for two hundred forty one yards, three picks today. He's now thrown or he had uh, he has six turnovers the last three weeks, five touchdowns, five interceptions, and one last fumble. Farter shirt. Sam Darnold. Well, I think he had five picks in the first eight weeks, and he's now had five picks in the last two weeks. And I believe all three of his interceptions today were in the red zone, or maybe even in the end zone. Yeah. Were they in the end zone? The the Vikings. Wait, I have. You want a crazy Vikings stat just to give you an idea of how badly? Yeah, oh, they kept going to the red. I believe at one point they had run more plays in uh, Jaguars territory than the Jaguars had run in the entire game. And so the Vikings won 12 to 7. Yeah, for the record, and if you they want a won, crazy but, stat yeah. from Dante, Dante Coppola was filming. The Vikings won despite scoring no touchdowns and turning the ball over three times, which teams were 0 for their previous 192 times doing that. No <laughs> touchdowns, three turnovers. There's one of these stats every week now. Yeah. But I anyway, actually yeah. agree. Every week there's a team that was pre- you know, the situation you 700 were. 700 two- straight yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, well, that's out the window. <laughs> we're living uh, in a weird world. I think this is closer to a shark, to be honest. Yeah, like he's turning into a pumpkin. I do yeah. believe that a little bit. I mean, we, I, I think Kevin, Oak, you can only do so much with what you have. And I, I don't think Darnold was just going to become, you know, whatever version of Brock Purdy that he was supposed to be on the Vikings. I do think that there is a, there is a ceiling on this team because of him. And like Kevin O'Connell, the coach of the Vikings, is an awesome play caller and a great coach. And we saw what he's able to do with quarterbacks much worse than Darnold, right? Like Josh Dobbs came in last year, looked good for a little bit. And then, you right. know, teams start to figure you out. They adjust. 
and now there's a bit of a ceiling, I think, on this offense. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think the Vikings have shifted in general to a team that everybody was so surprised that they might be like a potential one or two seed in the NFC. I think that vibe has shifted, and now they're more of like a really strong defensive team with an offense that can sometimes be a liability, and they look more like a wild card team. Yeah, I, I don't think it's totally a coincidence that Sam Darnold's declined pretty rapidly ever since their left tackle, Christian Darisaw, has been out for the season. I don't Good think that's point. totally yeah. a coincidence. And also, the, again, I think that what I think defenses are forcing Darnold to think a little bit more. And I think within, you know, Sam Darnold, like all of us, inside Sam Darnold, there are two wolves. And one of them is an idiot. <laughs> 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 and today he That's fed that metaphor. wolf. Uh, I, thank yeah. God, Sam Darnold, the one defense he doesn't have to play is the Vikings defense. Think how bad he would be right, against the right. Vikings defense. But he plays them every day in practice, Craig. Yeah. Maybe they're too help. good. Maybe they're, help. maybe they're rattling yeah. him. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you go. Shart for Darnold. Uh, definitely Shart for James Houston on the Lions. That's definitely a Shart. Seems I clear. actually the respect evidence he is kept clear. playing. Yeah. I actually Especially, yeah. were they were playing on a it was a field turf, wasn't it? It was not grass. Yeah. 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 What does that I have was, to do with For it? a second, I thought it was a potential there's an no unfortunately dirt. placed stain, but right. I don't think so. I, if you look at it, there's no way that he could have made contact with the ground that would make that yeah. kind of mark. That's just fair. that the way it's <laughs> a fair. pattern. There's fair like because you see it the all grundle. the time, like players get tucked on the logo or whatever and it rubs <laughs> off. Yeah. Anyway, the Gooch stain is tough to achieve. <laughs> the go- yeah, it's pure Gooch. The other one we have to. So another far to shart. Darren Rizzi, the Rizzler, Saints' new interim head coach. Oh my god, coach. this story. It took us how long to get to this? Uh, okay. So yeah. the Sa- so the Saints won today. The Saints' <laughs> new coach. So much shit talk today. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> no, it's really a lot of potty poopy. humor. <laughs> Apex Saints Mountain t- for shit. Apex Mountains for pooping in NFL games. I mean, Saints won twenty to seventeen over Atlanta. New coach theory. Uh, we're just we have to just play Kai. Can you just play the audio, please? Of the how this is the how the press conference for Darren R- uh, Rizzi began after they won the game. <laughs> this is first the beginning. This is how my day started. I got I get down here to the stadium. I get down to the Superdome. I go in the co- head coach's locker room, which you know I've never used before. Right. So here I am early in the morning. I go to the bathroom, and this is how my day started. I clogged the toilet, <laughs> and I'm like, this is going to be a crappy day, pun intended. <laughs> You know what? First you know, off, love the voice. Yeah, I actually do understand the RFK vibes now. <laughs> yeah, I get it now. It's there. It's like RFK talking about a bear. I tried to tell you. You're right. Um, you know what's kind of funny about that quote is like, if Kai would have kept playing it a little longer, he got in a, he got a small laugh initially there, but then when he did the like, so I thought to myself, it's going to be a crappy day, pun intended. Nobody laughed Crickets. really, <laughs> and then he kind of kept going, and he was like, "So that that was me, right? I don't, I didn't exactly feel like a head coach after that." And no, it was, he like a little bit, he kind of bombed a little bit, and it, I thought it was <laughs> the an Joker interesting. Meme. Stra- yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting strategy to be like, "I'm going to come out with a little joke, see if it lands." This is a massive overshare, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> we don't there's need something, to know you. There's something shit, you clog every now the and toilet. then. You forget that all these guys have only worked around other men and other athletes for their entire life in literal locker rooms. And like the idea that you would just share with like people you like vaguely work with that you clogged the toilet is like the most like, can you imagine just telling coworkers in any sense you clogged the toilet today? Yeah. Real pick me energy there. Kind of like, (laughs) like make, like I want to go viral. How can I go viral? I think it was kind of genuine, like so, like I'm not like I don't think he was trying to get attention. I just think he just has no sense. I think he was excited. Like, no common <laughs> sense. Like, dude, come on. Yeah, it kind of it was like puppy dog. Like, isn't this right. funny? I shit <laughs> my pants. <laughs> it's a funny hat. A big hat. It's bigger than a normal. I clogged hat. the toilet. I'm a head coach. <laughs> Austin texts no Riz. No, yeah, no it turns Riz. Turns out no Riz. For I don't know. Guy. They won. <laughs> Maybe this is football. Got on is field this, Riz only. I, I maybe talking about clogging the toilet as a head coach is like football Riz. I don't know. We're not talking about yeah. I mean, they we're not talking about Derek Carr. Like if, Har- if Harbaugh or did, Valdez Scantling. I yeah. gotta say, if Harbaugh did that whole set, people would have ate that up. Oh, I think yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's really true. Rizzler, Rizzler, baby. <laughs> Riz. Oh my God! All right, uh, Farter Shart. Any other Farter Sharts here? DK Farter yeah. Shart. Running back Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos had a single carry today for one yard. Javante Williams has been kind of the starting running back for the whole season. And my boy, yeah. Sean Payton, who I can't hate on him because I love him. 
And I don't know how his mind works. Because <laughs> I love him. But he did give Javante Williams one carry in this in their uh, yeah. fourth round rookie, Audric Estime, basically just played the whole game. And Javante right. Williams is irrelevant. So fart or shart? Uh, shart. It yeah. feels like it's really Jover with this guy. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, Javante <laughs> Williams was drafted three coaches ago, and he's a free yeah. agent at the end of the year. And I don't think they're going to resign him. I think Sean Payton wants to know whether Audric Estime is good. And I, I think that... It's it's very 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 much like a do we really need Javante Williams back and the answer is going to be no so I don't I want to I want to go waiting. back in time and shake myself because I had like an I had an off season take where I was like I don't want to be like held captive to the whims of Sean Payton whoever he decides to play in any fucking given week and then I walked it back after that for some reason I was like yeah you know actually if you look back in history like. Sean Payton's running backs have all finished really highly in, in fantasy because they pass the running backs a ton, blah, blah, blah. There's always this one-two punch. And I just want to go back and shake myself and be like, you know, stick with that take because we are we are now just prisoner to the whims of Sean Payton. Whatever he's feeling in any, any given day. Maybe it'll be uh, that other guy whose name I can't even remember. He got he had, he had a neck injury or something. He came in and like... Jaleel McLaughlin? No, it was the other one. McLaughlin, too, is or, or whatever. He's like... Oh, Tyler what? Beatty? Yeah, Tyler yeah. Beatty or Tyler Bidet, speaking of shit talk. Oh my god, um, what is going on today? Bidet. I don't know. Weird. But anyways, my point <laughs> my point is I don't know what's going on. Sean Payton wants to feature a different person in his offense every single week. Um, and that's just something that we have to live with. You can't question genius. But I do think SK is probably certainly. the starter going forward. Well, well. Craig, who's got you feeling nicey today? And also, you know, sorry, who's got you feeling nicey? Who? No, that's not the sound. What is who? It? Who? Yeah. Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings, San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Led the team in yards and catches. I like this guy. <laughs> Clutch, fired up, plays with a lot of energy. Big, agile, good hands. I think he would be a starter on a lot of teams, man. I like that Jawan Jennings guy. <laughs> Actually, though, Jawan Jennings is awesome. He, he On the season, he leads the team in targets and yards per game. And he, he feels like, honestly, him and Kittle are the two most clutch guys on the team. Jawan's just awesome. I, he's it, he's super fired up. He's really, really good. I mean, he is like the most dependable player, I think, on this Niners offense right now. It is nuts to me that they paid Brandon Ayuk $30 million a year, and now he's out for the year, and Jawan Jennings looks straight up better than Debo Samuel. He really does. And I know Debo's hurt with like three different injuries, but Jawan Jennings looks so... I, I, Kittle and Jawan look like the future of the team. Well, to be honest. What is it? Did they, they just re-signed Juwan, right? They did for like yeah. a fraction of They signed him right money. before. Yeah, so he's signed. not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, he, he works really well what's with, his this, face? with this offense. Are you him, Parasol, and Kittle totally look like, I mean, Kittle's older, but yeah. Jennings is amazing. DQ's Love got Jennings. you feeling nicey. Bijan. Bijan. Bijan Robinson, Atlanta Falcons? <laughs> Craig's way better at this. Do you want to just finish it off for me, No, Craig? that was pretty good, actually. Yeah, you um, do that was good. 20 touches? 20 carries, 160 yards, two touchdowns. He's looked awesome for the last few weeks. Five straight games, 100 scrimmage yards each. The number one running back in football. Actually, I didn't check that. Mixon might have it now. Um, 22.4 points per game over the last five weeks. Huh. <laughs> huh. That was good. Well, one more. Th they come in threes. Uh, huh. you know, I don't okay. have one on. That was great. Who else we got? No, those great. Hi, I, you don't have one. No one making you feel nicey. Bryce, uh, it was the Cardinals. We talked about him earlier. Kyler Murray, the Cardinals' offense. I, yeah. I mean, Kyler. I, I thought he was playing fantastic. James Conner. Honestly, it's James Conner. I, I Kyler, Kyler gets a lot of love. I just want to shout out James Conner, who in the most clear, like George Kittle. Actually, we were just talking about James Conner genuinely plays with like stronger will than other people. <laughs> yeah, like his that's resolve. True. His soul. He does want it more. He wants it more. He spiritually <laughs> is a Detroit Lion. Yeah. He yeah. wants to play football. They're going to find a way to get him next year. Yeah. I like, I, 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 it's, you know it when you see it. Like, that yeah. guy fucking cares more than the other people on the field. James Conner cares more than everyone there. He single handedly changes the personality of the Cardinals offense, who, yes. like, Marvin Harrison and Kyler, I guess Trey McBride's pretty tough, but like, I, I feel like the way Kyler plays makes you think of like, Kind of like a softer style. And James Conner completely masks all of that because he's such a, a badass. It, there's only like, totally. I don't even know. You can count them on one hand, the number of players you could say that about. James Conner's one of them. I would say that about George Kittle as well, where it's like he just clearly cares more about this sport than the other people try to tackle him. I love uh, James Conner. He's awesome. Uh, I, on that note, though, because I feel like I'm talking the Niners now, I, I just wanted an intrusive thought I had today. 
So did you guys see the video of Debo Samuel? So the Jake, the, the 49ers kicker today missed three kicks. Jake Moody missed three kicks. The Niners ended up winning anyway. The Niners beat. He did the, hit the game winner. He did hit the game the winner. And it was windy yeah. too, but the Niners beat the Buccaneers 23 to 20. But Jake Moody missed three kicks. He's come back from an injury. Did you see Debo Samuel shoving by the, like the long snapper by the throat and then kind of hitting Jake Moody in the face? He had a helmet on, but he hit Jake Moody kind of in the face in the, on the way back. And he shoved him in the, the long snapper in the throat after the third missed kick. And I was just kind of like, you know, that's basically what Urban Meyer did. Like Urban <laughs> Meyer went up and just kicked the, the kicker. Charges? Like, yeah. Make your kicks dipshit. He didn't shove the kicker by the throat. We're just going to let this go because we like Debo. It's kind of <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. 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 We are. The vibes continue <laughs> to not be good in San Francisco, even when they win. You know, it's like, it's like Shannon and Purdy are beefing. Things are still not great. Dude, Dude Shannon Shanahan keeps calling out Purdy. It's great. I think Purdy Shanahan awesome subconsciously, today, Shanahan subconsciously blames Purdy for the Super Bowl. I swear to God. It, it, it It's like leaking out of Shanahan's pores. That like all these like weird things with Purdy. It's really I, strange. Isn't it same with Jimmy G? If Jimmy G hits Emmanuel Sanders, they win that Super Bowl. It's yes. like always the quarterback. I think it's so funny how Shanahan talks about the quarterbacks, wh- whoever it is, because it's always been. It's almost like you know, and we've always said this: like the quarterback is an extension of of Shanahan. It's like an avatar of Shanahan. And when he like is talking to any of the reporters or whatever, he's like, "Yeah, we missed two throws on that drive or or whatever in that in first half." And he's like, "That's like how I talk to my five year old son." I'm like, "We don't." You know, we don't pee all over the wall or whatever. We don't when we when we're done taking a poop, we wipe our butt or whatever. Like we, you soften it by saying we <laughs> instead of just saying, yeah, Brock Purdy fucking missed two throws. Right. On yeah. That. We missed a couple throws. We but there's only the one throws. guy throwing the football. <laughs> we all do. I just about. think it's really like funny. The Michael, that. Dude, my, the Michael change before he's at SNL, Michael Che had this joke of like, I'm watching the news. We owe China eleven trillion dollars, and I'm like, yeah. we. <laughs> like, I don't owe China shit. <laughs> we owe Sprint ninety dollars. <laughs> yeah. Oh my know. god. It's a good. It's just like uh, I like that quirk about coaching. Yeah, we missed through two throws in that. I'm half. just saying the Niners, man. They're like they almost fell to five hundred today. They won. They're like the worst vibes ever. They're shoving the freaking long snapper by the throat, and Shanahan's coming for like Purdy, and they're like win six and four. They seem miserable. Anyway, what other intrusive thoughts did you guys have today, Craig? I, I I was thinking about George Pickens today, and I gotta say, I think George Pickens is underrated. And mm-hmm. I know that might sound crazy because he's he's like becoming quite famous because of his like screwball antics on the field. But I, <laughs> I think it's really overshadowing like how good he is. He's he's really, I mean, he's like a WWE character out there today. I mean, if you if you search his name on Twitter, his like jump stiff arm, which I've never seen before, or his like <laughs> suplex of that defender. It's like after he hit the, the wrong button. Yeah, yeah, he's doing that all the time. All those things will come up before his unbelievable touchdown. In the end zone, which like every week he genuinely does something that very few yeah. wide receivers can do in the NFL. He has the coolest catch I've ever seen every, every week. week. Every week. And everyone's like, look at George Pickens. He like jumped. He like, you know, did the, what's the elbow thing? The elbow Fly slam. Elbow? Yeah, he did a flying elbow every week. And it's like, George Pickens does like three incredible things on the football field, catching the ball every week. And it gets overshadowed by how insane he is. Pickens does not believe in de-escalation. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone comes near him to do anything, he's like, it's odd. Dude, George Pickens is kind of like an AI that was trained only on Antonio Brown toe tap catches and that video of Antonio Brown like kicking the punter Drop, in the face. On the kick. Oh my God. And it's yeah. like, that's the only things George Pickens ever learned about football or like those things. And that's all he does on the field. I'm just like, I think he's so good. He's like, he's like the only dynamic player on the Steelers offense. And he like delivers every single week. Everyone knows the ball's going to him. And yet he, he catches it every week. And you're I think right. Like, like, oh, you're George right Pickens. that he's, no one's, I, I don't, underrated is weird. I would actually argue George Pickens is exactly properly rated I don't because know. everyone I he, knows he's a really, inc- he's as talented as anyone is catching the football. I mean, I no feel one like his would reputation ever say that. is. No one to say he's like one of the best receivers in the NFL. No, that, but I, I that's not so. what I said. I said he's a nine or 10 out of 10 at like catching the football. And also he will fight anyone at any time. <laughs> Like, that's his reputation. But I kind of think that's exactly who he is. Way, uh, Wilson threw a pick, right? 
I can't remember. Yeah, he the, did. Yeah, he threw an he, interception he, and he then George Pickens. And then the guy that was like, yeah, there was like just, two defenders around him. And then, him. <laughs> yeah, Pickens just turned around and like, like took out the other defender. It was like bizarre. He like just. Yes. He did not care about where the guy the ball was who going. intercepted yeah, the ball. He lightly tapped the guy, again. and I think he did tackle him by accident, but I don't think he knew that. He like saw happy, the... He turns into, like, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, he does. I was does. the first guy to take off my skate and stab a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like every... He's an innovator. Time, don't you ever touch my buck! Look, whatever we got to do, I know we got to keep George Pickens <laughs> away from a celebrity golf tournament. <laughs> That's my buck! <laughs> Just like smashing him up against the glass. Keep him away from Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever touch my puck. <laughs> Don't you ever touch my puck. <laughs> 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 I don't know, but I'm just like, I think George Biggins is probably a top 10 receiver in the league, and I don't think anyone would say He's that. He's so good, yeah. He's a top 10 catcher of the football. I, I think that to be a top 10 receiver in the NFL, I have to know that like literally if there's an active interception return happening right now, that you're not going to just try to kick the shit out of the, someone behind the play for fun. <laughs> like, I would is, argue that uh, as a wide receiver, Pickens is more responsible. Like his war is higher than almost any other wide receiver in the league. Like he, he is directly responsible for more wins for the Steelers than m- most receivers for their team. Fair, but also he's like the least responsible player. <laughs> he's, not like responsible. Ever seen. he's not he's responsible. Not the word I would points, think. Not responsible in any other way. <laughs> yeah, he's like the least <laughs> responsible person I've ever seen. <laughs> he's the best. You know what yeah. I'm There's this like random clip on the New Heights show of like Jason Kelsey's wife is on with like Travis and Jason. And she's and Travis is like, will you let me babysit am i responsible enough to babysit and jason kelsey or kylie kelsey's like literally never <laughs> uh yep dk did you have any intrusive thoughts today or uh my intrusive thought was just like who is this Steelers special teams coach that i've never heard of before this year now yeah I you, you're right about week. that danny smith he's been there for over a decade i know that he i know he has but i'm just like but, i've never <laughs> seen this he reminds before. me of um Craig, who's is there a act? Uh, is, there's a cop in the Dark Knight that looks like him, this like older, silver haired, kind of pudgy guy. He's a cop mm. in the Dark Knight. He reminds me of. Doesn't mm. matter, but yeah, I don't. I don't know why he's so famous now. Because right, they keep play, doing cool plays on special teams. I don't know. He gets really excited. Yeah. Play of the day. Um, I mean, it was the Chiefs blocking the kick. I mean, that was unbelievable. Very that was cool like play. crazy. Baker Mayfield stiff arming Nick Bosa to complete a fourth and seven. I think that was, was insane. Cooler. That was sick. Yeah. I've he, never he seen that. He stiff armed him for like 10 yards. Yeah. It was a long time. <laughs> it was a long stiff arm. Like it was really like extended. And it was on fourth and seven and he got it. Like it was, yeah. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. I also, mean, Pickens tra- catch, Pickens touchdown catch was yeah. P- yep. freaking crazy. And Trey McBride, the the rumble breaking a tackle from Sauce Gardner into like hurdling a different guy Every was week. pretty outrageous. I love McBride. I think Trey McBride is actually the best tight end in the league. Yeah. It's it, right read, now, it's honestly him or Kittle. Kittle. I think Kittle has to be it. But but McBride is McBride is nipping amazing. at his heels. Yeah. Worst play of the day was it has to be the defensive tackle for Washington jumping offside to literally make sure Jaden Daniels did not get the ball with a minute yeah, left in the game. Tough. Down two. Or that one was point. tough. What about runner up? The Texans offensive lineman stripping his own quarterback? That was pretty bad. What the fuck was that? Give me the ball. I'm going to go. What was his plan? They were like 20 yards behind. (laughs) Is that even? I got to tell you, I, 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 I know this is my job and I'm supposed to know the rules. I've never been clear on what the rules are and when linemen can advance the football. (laughs) They can't advance it on a fumble. Is is that a fumble? It's like he steals the ball. No, you can't hand it. Oh. I'm just saying, is he allowed to even do that? What the, he was just like, give me, give me. Like, I don't know. That's, I don't think it, I don't think he was thinking about that. It was all instincts. Because part of rock. me is like they should do that more. But that <laughs> was know. a terrible idea. Um, this one was not nearly as consequential, but it could have been. Uh Kamara, Alvin Kamara dropped like what would have been like a 50 yard touchdown really late in the game. Um, it would have been better for my fantasy day, and it also would have been better for the Saints, but they ended up winning anyway, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, but that that was pretty rough. Yeah, he never does stuff like that. That's very uncamara like. Arthur Smith Award for the coach that pissed you off. I actually, I, I actually have to go to college football for a moment and shout out the Utah athletic director because uh, Utah lost, and the athletic director went down. I, Sam Farnsworth tweeted this out. 
quote, I've been in sports journalism for 22 years now in one form or another. I've never seen an athletic director come to the podium for a press conference after a game, win or lose, in my entire career and talk to the media. And Mark Harlan, the athletic director for Utah, came and had a message and wanted to make sure the Big 12 heard it. And this guy literally came down and said, quote, this game was absolutely stolen from us. We were excited about being in the Big 12, but tonight I am not. Wow. I didn't see that. And he, I've got to tell you, it was pathetic. I thought it was the most loser shit I've ever heard. There were five, like, Utah's like five and four. The call he was complaining about was fine. I don't know. Worst, refs, <laughs> worst games are refereed every single week. I thought it was like the most loser energy I've ever seen from a person in sport. Like I, I couldn't believe like because I saw his press conference first. Then I went back and watched some of the game and like like what was like what could have I don't know. I thought it was pathetic. Yeah, that's a tough look. In general, like people coming on to complain about flags after the game is just really lame. But I mean, it's like, like a general man. Imagine if the general manager inserted himself to the head coach's press conference and was like, I'm upset we joined this league. Like, I, dude, get out of <laughs> Take here. Take my ball and going home. <laughs> like yeah. it's Anyway, uh, Craig, what about you? Any other um, coaches who pissed you off? I know this is my hobby horse, but I, I the, the Colts pl- were, were playing Jonathan Taylor down 17 with two minutes left. They, yeah. Jonathan this is a guy who's had like major ankle injuries the last two years. They threw this, him, se- this season, he just missed three weeks. Yeah, he, right. he was like a second game back. They threw him three straight passes on that drive. I think I, I figured, it. yeah. Do you, know I, do you know what I think the real answer is? And I, I mean this, and I don't say this lightly, and I'm not saying I agree with this, but what I actually think the answer is, I think Shane Steichen, the head coach, is not thinking about it. And I think any assistant coach who would bring it up doesn't want to be branded a bitch for thinking like, what if he gets yeah, but a hurt? lot of teams, like a lot of teams sit their star players when they're in blowouts. I'm, like, I'm it's teetering. Very I just, I'm, I'm teetering I, I, on Shy- Steichen being fraud watch, to be honest. It's, it, I, everything right? that's going on with the Colts. I understand that you have to be a little fearless and you want guys to get reps, but Jonathan Taylor literally just missed like almost a Dude, month. I just, and like, they like marched down and threw a touchdown with like four seconds left. It's just like dumb. Worst, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like the ultimate <laughs> so garbage time. They caught a touchdown with like one second left. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose one league because they did that. Worst referee moment, DK. Who's your worst, least favorite referee moment I today? Get your guys' take on this. The refs uh, in the very end of that Washington Steelers game Great called call. the guy. Loved it. <laughs> okay, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> called the guy down uh, on fourth down, like a, a yard short of the the yards to go or whatever the. And they like reviewed it and it was like pretty clear he had gotten a first down and then they like reviewed it and said that it was like the call on the field stood and everyone was like, what the fuck? I I thought that was weird. I don't know. I don't know if it was clear he got the first down. I thought it was very close. I'm kind of okay with the call leaving it because I think that like he probably, Zach Ertz probably got the first down. I won't lie. But it was kind of like a process of elimination. You never saw the ball. You kind of had to assume. And if I think I've gotten one thing right in my entire career about football, it's that referees, the rule of instant replay, like, because what is the definition of clear and obvious? The definition mm. should be if you have to watch an angle more than three times, it's not clear or obvious. And I had to watch that. Zerk. It's like, if you watch the Zach Ertz one, you need to watch it like a few times. And it, I don't know. I, 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 I so I'm didn't not think a, it was that egregious. We okay. can't, we can't just apply this microscopic thing to every play and everything. It's, it's much more for like the, what was the one they called a catch and it turned out it bounced right into like Malik neighbor's hands or something. I don't know. It was it's for that. That's fair. I, did I you guys it was a great call? Yeah. <laughs> great. Were you guys awake this morning? <laughs> no. When Sean Hockley announced a false start in German during the no, Giants Panthers no, game? No, but that was what I had noted. Um, how do you think he did? How was his German? We do, yeah. I don't we know. have German speaking listeners. Oh, if anyone, yeah, if anyone emails, if you were at this game, let us know what the game was like if you're in Germany, and also let us know how Sean Hockley's Germany was. Please email us at ringofantasyfootball.gmail.com. Yeah, Fuck. Was, also <laughs> German. Like, it's one of the morning here. No, I'm actually fine. less interested in how his German was. I'm more interested in if it if it annoyed you or not. You know how, like, <laughs> right. sometimes if you're with, like, a parent and you're at a Mexican restaurant, and they'll say, like, gracias to the waiter, and you're like, you don't have to do that. You know, right. that's yeah. like, that's like, don't this is about you. Not, yeah, Spanish. You're yeah. making this about you, not yeah. them. You don't need to do that. Um, also, I found out that his father, Ed Hockley, did this in Mexico in 2005. Oh, he, right. He, uh, in German? <laughs> yeah, in German. <laughs> in Germany. Oh, wow. I, he, uh, Craig, in Spanish. I, he spoke Spanish. I've thought about this for 10 hours and I realized it really bothered me and annoyed I've me. I thought about it for 10 hours. I have. 
Okay. But what am I going to do? Think about the Giants? I have thought, and here's where I'm at. I actually think it was charming for anybody else to do this because it was Sean Hockley. It really bothered me. And you know why? It's because what you just said that his dad did it in Mexico yeah. and now Sean Hockley. Sean Hockley's energy is like a local town sheriff who thinks he's better than everybody. And he walks around with like his hands on his belt buckle. And the only reason he's sheriff is that his dad was the sheriff before him. And then his dad got him the sheriff job. And that's like Sean Hockley's energy. Nepo ref. Nepo ref. All the time. What did he say in German? Like, was it a long call? Or was it just like literally one or two words? It was a decent amount of German. False start, five (laughs) yards, number whatever. (laughs) It was a decent amount of German. It wasn't like three words. It was like a, a, a long sentence. Do you okay. think he's like on the plane practicing this? He's certainly yeah, doing it yeah. in the mirror. He was I think probably the, thinking about that just, the whole did game. He do, did he do the whole JFK thing where he said like the, the I don't, I'm not even going to repeat it. It was oh, like he, whatever. I Berliner, am, all Berliner, Berliner, Donut. Yeah, yeah. I, DK, <laughs> I will say the number one thing you've changed my mind on during the course of this podcast is I, I, I still give a lot more credit to referees as a concept than you, but you changed my mind where I, I think that you I'm understood cynical. much better than me. That referees are practicing this stuff in the mirror and very excited to be on national television and think they're a big deal. We don't want referees to be showmen. And we, don't, we want them to be Milford men, neither seen nor heard. A lot more. Yeah. I, <laughs> this, this was like classic. I don't want to hear from you, man. So yeah. shut up yeah. and whistle. Uh, shut up and whistle. <laughs> exactly. Shut up and whistle. Uh, All right. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, Lucille Bluth, I don't understand the stat line. I won't respond to it. Uh, I just have to, I mean, I would like to just shout out that um, every Florida football team has lost in college in the NFL. This is from Tim Reynolds. This has never happened. Every Florida team is 0-11. Wow. In college football, Florida, Miami, FSU, USF, UCF, and FAU all lost. Oh, this weekend? Oh, yes, wow. in, the, in Division One In the FCS, yeah. Florida Atlantic, uh, or FAMU, Bethune, and Stetson all lost. And the NFL, the Jags and Bucks lost. So if the Dolphins lose tomorrow... The state of Florida will be 0 and 12 this week for the first time ever wow. at every level college football and the NFL. Wow, that's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um, mine was that. It's <laughs> pretty fun. Cooper Rush. <laughs> yeah, Craig's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Good pull. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that felt like another, like, the last team to do that are like teams that have been 750. Yeah. One now. Uh, mine is that Cooper Rush's 45 passing yards are the fewest in a game with 20 plus attempts since 2015 when Peyton Manning had 35 passing yards against the Chiefs and they won the Super oh, Bowl Jesus. that year. <laughs> <laughs> that was when his arm didn't work. Yeah, oh they won God. the Super Bowl. Someone who literally had a spinal injury. That's the last time. Oh my God. All right. DK? Uh, I just thought it was weird to see MVS have three catches for 109 yards it was and two weird. touchdowns. And, and when I was going back, get, like later in the day, I was like, MVS. Wait, what team is he on again? Yeah. How many teams <laughs> have you been on this year? Three? I was like, because I couldn't remember. I literally like couldn't place it for a second. But yeah, it was obviously the Saints. Um, everywhere he goes, man, he just makes a difference in one way or another. <laughs> you know, and Derek Carr, <laughs> it's funny. Every once in a while, Derek Carr throws like the most beautiful deep ball you've ever seen in your life. Derek Carr... <laughs> I actually love it when Derek, you know, something good is going to happen when Derek Carr takes like six steps to like make a throw. Did you notice how like in the two deep balls that he threw to MVS today, he literally had to get like a running start to throw the ball. And I was like, something good's about to happen when he starts, when he, when he starts doing that run, Mm -hmm. that's when I I start. He he gears up, he does his little crow hop and then it's a fucking dime. I also want to shout out Valdez Scantling because there's a chance we'd literally never talk about him on the show ever again. Do you remember the overtime of the Super Bowl when on the fourth down or or third down, Mahomes had like a, they ran on like third and four and Mahomes picked it up on like a power sweep. Just pretend if you don't, it's fine. Okay. But anyway, he ran on an overtime and it was like huge. And they, that was the drive. They ended up scoring the touchdown. Marquez Valdez Scantling suggested that play in the moment. (laughs) Valdez Scantling called the Mahomes run and Mahomes and Andy Reid were like, yeah, that'll work. And they like won the Super Bowl three plays later. So Valdez Scantling called that play a receiver. Saying a quarterback should run the ball on third down. Which, he's like, I again, don't know why you're telling me this, but I like it. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know why you're over here, but he's like, sure, I let's do it. Anyway. Yeah. So shout out. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Two, two tight ends who outscored Jalen Waddle and a lie. Monday night football for Jalen yeah. Waddle. So we'll see if he can save Craig's all, ball for all the marbles. All right. Burn book. Do you guys have any players you want to put in the burn book? I would like to nominate CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud. Stroud. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> because CJ Stroud hasn't had more than 12 fantasy points in a fucking month. And he's the QB 22 on the season. And he has two touchdowns in the last four games. And he's killing people. By people, I mean me. Do you think it's all his fault, though? Or are you, like, blaming him? Or are you just like, I'm sick of it? Because I feel like the Texans' whole offense is just... Dude. Run, run, third and ten. CJ, figure, I, I, so, figure I, something out. That's fair, but like we burn Patrick Mahomes. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, no, Touché. I don't think that whether it's his fault is relevant to be <laughs> honest. Right. But I will say the Texans, it, the, the the numbers match the eye test because they're like twenty eighth in EPA per play running on the first two downs, and then they're like eighth in EPA per play and throwing on third. Even yeah. though every freaking see, like tonight. It's like everything's like third and 10, third and 10, third and 10, third and 10, all night for CJ Stroud. First two, third and 10, third and, and 16. He was making bonehead ball. throws. Like that yeah. Yeah. Tank Dell interception was unforgivable. He was wide open <laughs> yeah. for three minutes and the crowd was, was yelling, throw the ball. That was really bad. I, a couple other suggestions. Uh, Cole, Cole, Cole says DJ Moore's last five weeks and he just has a thing mm. and it's yep. DJ Moore getting. I'm going backward in time. 24 yards, 33 yards, 27 yards, 20 yards. Wow. Marcus Valdez Scantling. Really Valdez Scantling today had more yards than DJ Morris had in the last like six weeks combined. Yeah. I think I mean, that's we a really good DJ one. DJ Moore. That's a good um, one. He was wearing a hooded sweatshirt for some reason today under his pads. I'm surprised more players don't do that. But maybe it's like maybe a, that's why he's playing terribly. It could be negative twelve degrees out, and I would not go jogging in sweats. <laughs> I don't. I've never understood the working out in the sweats thing. It feels. It sounds terrible to me. I will always wear shorts. I know we're talking about a sweatshirt, but I'm just saying, like I, guys who play basketball in long sleeves, you gotta breathe. I've never understood that. So well, the long. So I don't mind the long sleeves if it's like um, like dry fit, but I agree that like like sweat pants. I know that despite the name, like working out in sweatpants is very off-putting. We have new technology now. You don't need to be wearing sweatpants. Like Pickens wears sleeves sometimes. I just don't, I I just don't get that at all. It's very like John Wooden to like, you know, it's like something about the 50s, Hoosiers in a gym. Yeah. You remember Silver Linings Playbook? Bradley Cooper's character would go jogging in like the sweatsuit with the garbage bag. That just sounds like the worst thing in the world. I know you sweat more, but like. (laughs) Yeah, it's like the wrestling team would do that. And that the whole point was like torture. Yeah. 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 All right, so we're doing DJ Moore or CJ Stroud? I think more. I think, I think more DJ because, Moore. yeah. He, yeah. I agree. Also, his vibes are just out of control bad. Yeah. Lastly, before we get out of here, we have to just acknowledge that the Charlotte Hornets announcer, who we're obsessed oh, with, Eric had Collins. this call tonight. Eric Collins, who's I, the greatest announcer in the game. Uh, LaMelo <laughs> for the Hornets hit a three tonight and um, hit it, Kai. LaMelo! <laughs> With the guts of a cat burglar! <laughs> what? With the guts of a cat what burglar? That, what does that mean? Is that a <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> I love this guy. Yeah, I think he's, he's my best. favorite person Is that in the world. A phrase? <laughs> With the guts have, of a cat burglar. I had to Google it to see if that was a phrase. It did come up. There's no. Oh, it did? No, it did not come up. I, oh, okay. I, he just said that. He's the best. <laughs> Oh, so wait, God, that's off the dome. That's incredible. But he was just like, ah! Kai, play one more time, please. He screams. LaBella! Yeah! <laughs> With the guts of a cat burglar! Yeah! I shoot my head on my shelf. LaBella! He is the only announcer who, like, actually screams at 100%. Maybe Gus Johnson. For for clarification, was that just like the end of the first quarter? No, or? no, that was a game time three. <laughs> okay, it was like eight seconds. Left. <laughs> it was just like beating the shot clock. <laughs> Dude, he's also the announcer for Maryland football when they were like, "Oh my god, <laughs> disaster, Good disaster! What a terrible decision with the guts of a cat burglar." <laughs> Dude, we have to. That reminds me of when Biden said when he has the morals of an alley cat. And everyone was like, what does that fucking mean? <laughs> that okay, makes more well. sense. That he got the guts of a cat burglar. I was going to say, cat burglars, do they even have guts? Their whole thing is they can't get caught. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> With the guts of a cat burglar. Do you think he had that ready? Like he that he was like, if something big happens, that's my phrase? Or did that no, just. No, he just, he just blacks out. Got a laminated stuff, card. Blacks yeah. back in. It reminds me of like James Harden said that once, like, are you planning a move? He's like, dude, I don't remember anything I've ever done. He's just like, he's just doing it. 
Cat burglars come through the second left floor, right? Is that well, what cat they works? could. Yeah, I think sure. they just come in silently and leave silently. I think that's the oh, main. I thought it was they like they come they climb up the wall and they they enter through this second. That level. implies you couldn't cat burgle a ranch house. The, right. Yeah. Wow. Which I don't think that that sounds <laughs> ridiculous to me. Thought it was good. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question, Craig. Now I'm wondering. Maybe it's just a quiet burglar. But aren't all, bur- all burglars? I think it just quiet. means they're like really flexible. Is and it like... opposed to all the loud burglars? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. what's that? Show I feel like a me. loud burglar has to have more guts. I thought it was like a cat. Cats are always like weird. <laughs> they're definitely like up on the, I'm up here. on the top of the door, you know? It's like a cat. A loud like burglary is called a robbery. Craig, I think you're right. It's, uh, Austin just sent the definition. A thief who enters a building by climbing to an upper story. No way. So yeah. you can't burgle a ranch home. <laughs> a one story home. No, you can, <laughs> yeah, no, you can burgle. You can't cat always, burgle. You can't cat burgle. Yeah. You can definitely burgle it. Well, you could burgle it, but just not. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned that burgle was a word, was a was a verb in college because somebody made a short film called Burgle. And I was like, that is that an actual word? Burgle. Like you can do yeah. You burgle a house? It, it doesn't, well, like, if you've, and I'm, I'm you, a, you know, it, it's happened to me, and I'm sorry if it's ever happened to anyone, but, like, that's why you get Simply Safe. But if you've ever, like, been burgled, I don't even know if and then you have to, anymore. like, use it on the phone with your insurance company, the police, and you're like, I was robbed. And they're like, actually, you were burgled. <laughs> it's really demeaning. Yeah. Be like, you weren't actually Wait, what, robbed. Robbery is, is like. Robbery's active. Robbery's like. like they're like, taking it off your person. Yes, like okay. like if you're there and they're there and they're like, give me your shit, yeah. that's robbery. Yeah. But if you come home and someone was in your place and they burgled. took your shit and you're like, I got robbed and the cops are like, you were burgled. And you're like, oh. And it's like, that's it's an unserious the word. The cat's a cat burglar. <laughs> yeah. I oh was God. burgled. I was That's actually honestly bur- golf and Stroud all night. They got I was going to say, they actually did burgle me. And, and Jalen <laughs> Waddle will burgle. burgle me tomorrow night. <laughs> burgle. Uh. <laughs> all right. Thank you, DK. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Kai and Carlos, for producing this episode. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, everyone, for helping on the scenes. Thank you, everyone. Email us at ringerfantasyfootball.gmail.com. Our German listeners, email us for Sean Hockley's German, a review, and email us about if you and went if anyone went to this you. game. Yeah, like, and, how was his accent? Was it annoying that he tried? Or did, was, did you find that? You know, cute, charming, charming. or off putting. Yeah. And was there anything else? I bet a, lo- a lot of Europeans just think Americans are super charming. <laughs> yeah. Also, well, <laughs> yeah. also, if you want the one second song We're playlist, so charming. Email us at ringerfantasyfootballgmail.com if you want the one second song playlist. We have a song, it's now 120 songs that you can recognize in one second. Oh, wow. And yeah, we have a ton. It's really fun. It's a great drinking game. You give a drink if you get the song, give a drink, you get the band. Take a drink if you get this wrong. It's really fun. Emails are in gmail.com. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, House of Pain. Nice. Which nice. is what Craig is living in right now. Oh. <laughs> also on the playlist. Oh, Jump, is it? Jump nice. Is this a great the intro? Yeah, it is Jump pretty uh, iconic. It's a sample, in fact. Oh, is it? The jump around? Song? Like the the hook or whatever. Hook? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Do you know I what they're sampling? I don't think I know any other House of Pain songs. I don't know if there are any. They made one. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're good now. Yeah, it's like the Chubbawamba. They're like, we just tub thumping. That's it. <laughs> we got together to make one song and one song only. <laughs> Pissing the night away. Yeah, man. That's Speaking of uh, things that don't translate directly to I American. To, back in the day, I used to know the lyrics of of Jump Around. That song is in Happy Gilmore to bring it back full circle. Oh, yeah, it yeah. is. Great soundtrack in that movie, actually. When is it in Happy Gilmore? It's when he's like, it's a montage of him starting to get better. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's when happy, it's when he, when he like, happy he does, he like, the he rides the pony yes. of the caddy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Will Zalatoris. Yeah. Will Zalatoris. <laughs> oh, God. How do we my puck, that? baby. Don't you ever touch my puck. Don't you ever touch my puck. <laughs> Wait, we need to make the video of George Pickett beating the shit out of Bob Barker. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> seriously though we have to keep George Pickens away from Drew Carey I'm not sure what <laughs> but Drew Carey's gonna kick the shit out of George Pickens mm. yeah Barker had good size I didn't realize that until I watched the movie no. he had a good left hook yeah <laughs> now you've had enough bitch. I want the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> the, the bitch at the end was the best <laughs> bitch enough bitch <laughs> <laughs> and he's like shadow boxing I actually think because they're making the sequel 
I, I maybe I'm just like wish casting this. But I think Drew Carey they might be in Happy Gilmore too. I think they might be doing something with that. <laughs> oh, no. That would make sense. What are we excited for Happy Gilmore? Like, do we think it's Happy Gilmore Two is going to be good? No, definitely not. No. But I'll watch it. Uh, I will watch it too. It'll be like typical Netflix, you know, Drek. Yeah, Drek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like everybody. Travis Kelsey's in it. There's gonna be like a bunch of slug cameos. I'm sure it'll be like cool to see people come back and everything. Wait, the Happy Lookout a girl is in it again, right? Julie Bowen, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Happy, happy Lookout. Happy Lookout. <laughs> Everyone who's seen the movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. But it said, <laughs> I don't know if they filmed it before Carl Weathers sadly passed away. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Chubbs. Marvel also, Qua- Shooter McGavin, that actor has had been waiting for this his entire life. He's got nothing going on. How except, dare like, you? Christopher sh- McDonald is a character in Hacks. His whole thing is just being Shooter McGavin, dude. Come Hacks on. just won the Emmy for Best Comedy, and he's like a, a legit character in it. But Okay, but his whole thing is just being Shooter. Did you know he was in Hacks? No. Okay. <laughs> No, I did not. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, he, he has a little bit of Kevin from the office energy where he's like, I'm yes. just going to lean into it. But exactly. He, he did. Yeah, yeah. He is. Could be worse. Let's be honest. Yeah. No, like I the, get it. Yeah. He's like a, the fifth or sixth biggest character in the best comedy of the, of the show of the year. Not bad for Shooter. God bless. Shooter. I, I, yeah, what if- I'll be at Red Lobster. <laughs> catch you at the Sizzler. Catch some grub. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, maybe another time. <laughs> Shooter? I thought we were going to be friends. <laughs> Who's that guy? What's that guy's name? Yeah. I like that guy. <laughs> That's, that is a good, like, uh, that guy award. Shooter? <laughs> I'm sure he's like somebody that Bill would immediately know. <laughs> Are you looking this up? Yeah, I want to find him before we go. I need to find him. Mm. Joe Flaherty. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He looks like that. Yeah. Good for him. Was he in Hacks? I don't think so. <laughs> he died. In, oh, Damn. he also died this year. He's 82 years old? Well, he was. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, dang. He died April 1st, 2024. Joe Flaherty, a legend. What a great performance. Well, on that note, Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're honoring him. Yeah, it's true. He was awesome in that movie. Goodbye, everyone, but especially Joe Flaherty. Yeah, come on. Shooter? Want to go to Sizzler, catch some grub?